let's draw the lattice diagram, lattice or the subgroup lattice diagram for Z20, a cyclic group of order 20. What am I talking about here? I'm talking about essentially a directed graph, like in discrete math, showing the structure of how, how all the subgroups of the given group are related to each other, with the whole group, the biggest group on the top, and the trivial subgroup, the smallest subgroup on the bottom. All right. Probably it'd be good to figure out, first of all, how many subgroups Z20 has. By the fundamental theorem of cyclic groups, it's got exactly one subgroup for each divisor of 20. What are the divisors of 20? One, two, four, five, uh, 10, and 20, right? One, two, three, four, five, six divisors of 20. Six divisors of 20. Therefore, six subgroups of Z20, since Z20 is cyclic. There's the extremes, the trivial ones, so to speak. The non-proper one, Z20 itself. The entire group itself, the trivial one, just zero, right? Z20, the numbers in Z20 are zero through 19 under addition mod 20. Zero is the identity operations addition. Yeah, addition mod 20. You're going to have a subgroup of order um, 10. Order five, order four, and order two as well. Before we try to make the diagram, maybe we should list what those are. So you got Z20 itself. So this is not the diagram yet. Might be good for us to practice listing out the generators. Certainly there's the, the simplest generator is just one. But think about chapter four. What else have we learned in chapter four? A cyclic group of order 20 is going to have, if it's Z20 in particular, the generators are going to be the numbers less than 20 that are relatively prime to 20. One. We want to avoid even numbers. Three. We want to avoid multiples of five. Seven. Nine. Eleven. 13, 17, and 19. There are eight generators of Z20. Hey, guess what? Those numbers are also the elements of U20 as a multiplicative group under multiplication mod 20. Isn't that interesting? Is that a coincidence? No. So that's the entire group. What would be a subgroup of order 10? How about the subgroup generated by 2? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 0. That's going to be a subgroup of order 10. What would the other generators of that be? That's a subgroup of order 10. It's a, it itself is a cyclic of order 10. What numbers, positive integers less than 10 are relatively prime to 10? Uh, 1, 3, 7, and 9. Those multiples of 2 will be generators. 1 times 2, 3 times 2, 7 times 2, and 9 times 2. Those will be the generators of the cyclic group of order 10. 1, 3, 7, and 9 are relatively prime to 10. Take those as multiples of the generator. 1 times 2, 3 times 2, 7 times 2, and 9 times 2. And they will be the generators 
of this subgroup order 10. How about a subgroup order five? It's that subgroup of order five. What are the elements? Multiples of four, four, eight, 12, 16, and zero. What are the generators? It's got order five, five is prime. One, two, three, and four are all relatively prime to, to five. Those multiples of this generator will also be generators. In fact, every non-zero element of this is a generator of this. This is worth checking by doing calculations on your own, maybe after class here. By the way, the subgroup order five is a subgroup of the subgroup order 10. Hey, five divides 10. There's a reason for that. Subgroup of order four, I hope it's pretty clear it would be this, generated by five. This would be the subgroup of order four. Its elements are gonna be five, 10, 15, and zero. A group of order four, where the positive integer is less than four, that are relatively prime to four, one and three. One times five and three times five will be generators. The generators of this are five and 15. Four does not divide five or 10, so it's not a subgroup of either of these. It is a subgroup of the whole group. And what about a subgroup of order two? That would be the one generated by 10, just got two elements in it, zero and 10. 10 is the only generator. That's a subgroup of order two. Two does divide four, so this is a subgroup of that. It also divides 10, so it's a subgroup of that, but it does not divide five, so it's not a subgroup of this. You can list out the elements if you want to be sure. And then we got the trivial subgroup, just zero, just the identity, generated by the identity. Now we want to put these together in a lattice diagram showing subgroup inclusions. Put the Z20 at the top, generated by one, for example. The next biggest subgroup is order 10. Put that below Z20 and maybe a little bit to the left. The next subgroup, next size has order five and five does divide 10. Remember I said subgroup generated by four is a subgroup of the subgroup generated by two. All multiples of four are also multiples of two. So I would not want to put that over here. I'd want to put it, say, below this one. Maybe not much below it. Maybe like that. The exact way that I structured this diagram in terms of how I put these lines is not relevant. What's important is the sub subgroup inclusions. This is a subgroup of that, so I do make a, a line connecting these. Really, this is a directed graph. You could draw arrows instead of lines. Next, we have our subgroup order four, but remember that subgroup order four is not a subgroup of either of these because four does not divide five or 10. So I do not want to put it under these. I'd want to put it maybe over here, maybe a little lower than that one, and indicate that it's a subgroup of the entire group, but not a, it's not a subgroup of this. So I don't want to draw a line there. Then we've got our subgroup of order four. No, we just did that. Our subgroup of order two, Two does divide four, it also divides 10. Uh, this is a little tricky, I didn't maybe draw this in the best way. Actually, let's do this. Let's put this one over here, sorry. It's not gonna be clean. The subgroup order two is generated by 10. I'll put it down here. It is a subgroup of this one and this one, but not a subgroup of that one. And finally, we have the trivial one. I could draw that. So I mean, that's maybe not the best way to draw this lattice, but it is showing the subgroup inclusions. It's confusing though, when you just look at the diagram, if you don't think about what I said before. 
about, for example, this being a subgroup of order two and two divides both four and 10, but not five. So it is a subgroup of the subgroup order 10 and the subgroup order four, but it's not a subgroup of the subgroup order five. Probably it'd be good to rewatch this part of this video again, because right, you, you're like one of these things where you, you're like, I understood that for a second, then all of a sudden I forgot it, right? So you got to rethink about it. All right, have a good day.